This is the last outlier two ever. Okay, not exactly this one. This is from my personal collection, but it's still sad. The outlier two has been my competition yo-yo for the last two years and has been through thick and thin with me. I've yo-yoed for 24 hours straight with it. I've survived 24 hours in the desert with it. I filmed viral videos with it, reignited my competitive yo-yoing with it. I even competed with it and placed second at the US National Yo-Yo Contest. Now, for what it's worth, I still think this yo-yo is a kick-ass yo-yo. I still think it holds up against every other yo-yo in the market right now, but I think it's time to move on. If you are like a hardcore watcher of this channel, you are like one of the OG members of the VU crew, you'll realize that every so often I have like a massive existential crisis and now that I've vlogged my life over like a span of like two years you begin to see it's always the same I've stagnated I'm not where I want to be right now I'm behind on where I think I should be at the moment and that same damn loop happens over and over and over again you, you think I would have learned my lesson by now and what I've come to realize is that you've got two choices in life you can either a deal with the anxiety that comes with growth and expansion or b you can deal with the depression that comes from stagnation and regression. Either way, you gotta deal with something, and by choosing not to endure one, you are inadvertently choosing to do the other. I heard this really good quote once, I can't remember where I heard it, but it, it, it went like this. The difference between an, an entrepreneur and a wantrepreneur, meaning someone who's actually doing it and someone who's just making it seem as if they're doing it, is that there needs to be some sort of leap. And what I mean by that is you have to let go of one thing in order to get the new thing. And for me personally, that, that's a scary process, you know? Like, what if I quit my nine to five and this yo-yo thing never takes off? What if I stop doing the old yo-yo reviews and the new content doesn't get views? Whereas someone who's just like a wantrepreneur posturing about it, they want the new thing, but they're unwilling to let go of the old. So all of the new things, it doesn't really matter if they fail because they're still clutching onto the old thing. And in my experience, you never really get to the next thing without letting go of the old thing. You know, it's kind of just occurred to me how dramatic I'm being about retiring a single yo-yo. That's just me. Something I need to work on. But before we retire this thing entirely, Let's learn a new yo-yo trick with it. So I've mentioned in other videos I've been getting consistent at that yo-yo trick and I saw Tyler McCallamore do like a 2.0 version. I've been doing like 2.0s for forever. This yo-yo trick looks wildly impractical and very difficult to do. So let's do it. The way this trick works is you swing around twice and instead of landing in a hook, you land in like a bread stall. Seems simple enough. Now my hypothesis is this yo-yo trick is kind of like this one where like when you first attempt it, it feels impossible, it looks impossible but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. Let's try this. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, alright. Sweat is coming off. Yep. Come on! One tip for landing the Brent stall when you're first learning it is to push this arm forward, kind of like that. You don't really do that once you get the hang of it but just to get the initial motion down no. String needs to be longer. I had a general idea as to how this trick would work, but as soon as I put my theories into practice, I figured it was way harder than I initially thought. Oh my god, this is, this is really hard. How does that even, it would land into something like that. Like, took me like way longer to land deconstructed than I thought. All right, stretching the string so you know it's a little easier to work with. Yo. How many clicks would this trick be? Comment down below. This is at least three. Oh! Oh! Yo! That took really long, but that's the first time I've ever hit that. Okay! Okay! Ooh! That's the second time. I'm starting to think of new ideas. You know that trick? What if you do it like... Yeah, that works. Woo! I don't really know what the secret to landing this trick is right now. Right now, I'm just spamming it over and over Ooh. again. Sometimes it Hell clicks, yeah. and I don't really know why. All right. That's the third time. I'd say, I'd, I'd say I got that trick. Oh. Stop, Alan. So we're at like, how many allied twos do we have left? What do you mean? They're all, they're all gone. They're all on that table. That table. Okay. So these are the last smooth ones, huh? Yeah. You know something that I kind of realized? There seems to be some sort of correlation between changing the yo-yo and like a player changing their style a little bit. Like if you look back, 
When Hiroki Suzuki changed from the speeder to the meteor, he leveled up. Like another example is like Gentry. I've asked him about this, he doesn't think it's the case. When he played with the Super G, he played one way, and then when he played with the Shudder, he played another way. I'm not saying that just because I've got a new yo-yo now, I'm going to exponentially increase. But what I do feel is a sense of excitement and invigoration and like desire to yo-yo and push the boundaries and create new tricks and like really excel past where I've been. Which is probably a good time to now. Yo, did that arrive today? I think so. I think these are the outlier threes. Yo, at every single outlier color ever. That is every color ever, yes. Oh my goodness. I just wanted to tell you that uh, that's it. You've got every color of the outlier ever. We're, we're going to stop making it yep. now. Got to represent the offset. Thank you so much, man. Dude, you're, you're insane. You're actually insane.